Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. So what I'd like to talk about today is um, record cleaning, to cut a long story short. Uh, in, a, in my recent uh, video, which I'll put a link to up here, uh, where I kind of run through my hi-fi system, I explained that uh, I use a Lorikraft PRC6 record cleaner and um, sort of inspired by recent videos I've seen, um, particularly of the Humming Guru, where uh, the subject of fluids, what fluids you use in it came up and um, seem to generate an awful lot of interest. So what I'm about to say is, is honestly is, is my personal experience and it will challenge, I've no doubt it will challenge what some people think um, and, and prophesy about, but uh, it, it is from my personal experience and just applying some logic to the, uh, the, to the equation, if you like, the equation of record cleaning. So as I see it, first of all, there's uh, three main aspects to the subject of record cleaning. First of all, the fluid. So <clears throat> do you use pure distilled water um, or do you use, uh, you know, uh, some sort of chemical? Do you add wetting agents, etc., etc., etc.? Now, I'm going to just um, briefly go through the fluids that I've used. But I will, first of all, I just write that. So that's the first, the first element, if you like, as I look at it. First element is the fluids, the solvent, the, the you know, the, whatever you're using. The second element uh, is the, is the kind of the, let's call it the agitation. Do you do this manually or automatically? Uh, do you use just sort of normal brushes? Or do you use um, some sort of sonic or ultrasonic cavitation? Um, what do you use to sort of move that fluid around in the grooves um, and, uh, you know, in so doing, loosen the muck, um, lift the dirt, put it into suspension in that fluid or dissolve it in that fluid? There's two different things, being in suspension and being dissolved. And then third is how do you remove that contaminated fluid? Um, you know, if, if we assume that the, the part two did its job properly and the muck is no longer embedded onto the surface of your record, but is actually held within the fluid in solution or suspension, how do we get that off the record? And there's there's various ways of renewed, but there's three ways that, my, that logically I can think of. This one is you vacuum it off, Two is you uh, blot it off with, with you know, just, um, you know, tissues or microfiber cloths or, or whatever. Or you let it drip dry, air dry, so to speak. And you can speed up the air drying process by, you know, using a fan. Or, and you can speed it up even more by using a hot air fan. Now, those are the three elements that I, how I... Well, certainly how I should break it down in this video, because this is how I consider it. So first of all, the fluids. There's all sorts of things on the market. Now, in recent videos and discussions, uh, the subject of Turgitol came up. And uh, Turgitol is a detergent. Uh, but but, but, but you want, th these are things that will dissolve greases or, or help remove greasy residue, uh, oily residues, uh, things like that, from whether it's from your skin, from your clothes, whatever. Now, distilled water uh, will dissolve something that's water soluble, but it won't dissolve things that aren't. It won't dissolve grease. It won't dissolve, um, you know, oils. Maybe if you blast the surface with enough, enough force, and here I'm thinking of uh, cavitation machines, maybe you can dislodge that and then you'll have tiny, you know, microscopic particles of oils or whatever suspended in that water and not on the surface of your record or not largely on the surface of your record. Um, but I think that the best way of getting that stuff off is, is to um, use some sort of solvent. This is kind of my vanilla, if you like, my go-to 
record cleaning fluid that I've been using. I was taught how to make this back in the 1980s when I worked at Reading Hi-Fi Centre. We had a Keith Monks machine in the in the shop and we offered a service uh, to clean customers' records. And, you know, one of the, you know, perks of being a staff member there was during my lunch times, I just used to clean my own LPs. Now, this is... Uh, 75% distilled water, 25% isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and uh, literally just a few drops of uh, Ilfetol, which is a photographic wetting agent. And that breaks down the surface tension and helps it get into the grooves. Obviously the IPA, the, uh, the alcohol content will, will help it dissolve oils and the like. Now, I've, I've been told so many times by so many people over the decades uh, that, that, oh, you shouldn't, use, you shouldn't use alcohol. You should never use alcohol on records. Well, you know, okay, I listen to you, I hear you. But these are records that I bought back in the 1980s. And here we are when I was working at Reading Hi-Fi. So, cleaned, Reading Hi-Fi Centre, 26th of the 1st, 1988. You'll also see a last sticker. Ignore that for now. Uh, but, um, okay, it's got a bit of dust on it, but you can blow the dust off because there's no grease on there. So I don't know how well that'll come out on camera, but this is a, it's definitely near mint. There's no question about that. It's definitely near mint. And I can play this and it sounds fantastic. Now this was cleaned with a wetting agent or a surfactant, that's another word for a wetting agent, breaks the surface tension of the fluid it's used in, typically water, breaks down the surface tension that allows it to get into the inner, you know, the real depths of the groove rather than bead on the surface. Um, so this was cleaned with a surfactant, but not only with a surfactant, with, with alcohol um, in, in a solution, of course. Uh, 40 something years ago, what's it, 40, 88, 45 years ago? The maths is correct. And it's absolutely fine. I haven't ruined it. It's not destroyed. Now, if I took this record and I cleaned it again, um, would it sound better? Yeah, maybe, because I haven't cleaned it for 45 years, but it's, I don't clean my records every time I play them. I clean them when I, when I buy them, new or secondhand. When they come into the house, I clean them. And, uh, and then I'll, you know, I might clean them again if I've had a party and got a bit drunk and put my greasy mitts on the record playing surface, you know, or if a friend's done the same or, um, you know, there's been smokers in the room and, and while well, records have been playing or, you know, whatever situation, but if the, if the record might have become contaminated, it'll get a, a new clean. Other than that, I'll just give it a brush. And I used to use something like that. I now have a Furutech brush. Uh, but, but if you've got no grease on the surface of the record at all, you can just brush the dust off. So in testimony to uh, fluids, you know, surfactants, alcohol even, not being... Um, you know, fatal to your record collection, uh, you know, I can I can bring up Exhibit A, so to speak. And I've got a good friend who I'm, I'm sure will be watching this, uh, David. Hello, David. I won't mention his surname, but uh, you know who you are, who is a chemist. Uh, I believe he's got a PhD in chemistry and he owns and runs a, uh, a plastics polymer company. And um, he's also, uh, you know, an avid audiophile, and he uses a very similar solution, water and uh, isopropyl alcohol with a bit of wetting agent to clean his vinyl. So I think that's a spare, that's, you know, I just think these are scare stories. And I think they're brought about by people who want to sell their own product. Simple as that. Um, and I think we need to look through the sort of the, I would say the nitty gritty of it all. Um, there is a, there there is or was a record cleaning machine called a nitty gritty, but we could, you know we need to cut through down to the nitty gritty of it all, and 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 really kind of examine what's going on and what's um, fake news and what isn't basically. Now, so that's 
you know, that was the, excuse me, that was the sort of vanilla record cleaning fluid of my uh-huh. youth. This is what I typically use now. Uh, it's made by Clear Audio. It's called Pure Groove. They do it in two versions. They do one for shellac, which I shall get onto very briefly in a minute. But um, this, again, it comes in a concentrate form and you dilute it with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, so, you know, the alcohol haters won't like it. But it's essentially sort of, you know, industrial quality vinyl cleaners, um, you know, um, solvents and detergents and the like. Uh, and it just, um, to my ears, it gives a very, very, very thorough cleaning. So, clear audio, pure groove, good stuff. There's plenty of these things on the market and you'll see that the vast majority of them are chemical based, you know, detergent based um, and many you put alcohol in. So, you know, the, the, if we believed everybody, you know, if we believed what we hear, um, you know, all our records would be not playable. This one's a bit different. L'Art du Son. Now I do have 78, uh, I do actually have a quite a decent 78 RPM collection. And 78s are largely, I'd say 99.9% pressed on shellac not vinyl there are a few on vinyl um and one thing about shellac is you cannot absolutely cannot clean those with alcohol it, it will dissolve them and uh, so that's you know that is a you know maybe that's where the fallacy of vinyl and, and alcohol came from i don't know but this stuff is an enzyme based cleaner uh works in a similar way to your sort of biological washing powder you'd use for your clothes laundry detergents and uh, works very well. You you dissolve this 100 ml bottle with five liters of uh, distilled water, and um, I find the best way of using this is to brush it on. You know, agitate it for you know 30 seconds a minute by brushing round and round and round with a, a suitable brush, and then leave it to sort of sit for for a few minutes. Give it another agitation, and then then um, suck it off and rinse as you would with your clothes in a washing machine, basically. I think that works very well. Uh, but it works well on vinyl too, but but uh, brilliant for shellac. Uh, I, I do prefer the Clear Audio Pure Groove for vinyl. Um, so that's that's kind of really my fluids covered. Um, and the thing about, you, you know, you might be saying, yeah, but do you need them? Why, if you've got a, if you've got a cavitation machine, you've, you've heard that you don't need them uh, because, um, you know, the cavitation does the job. Well, if you actually listen carefully to the people who have cavitation machines and talk about them, uh, they say that they, you know, yeah, they clean, they do fantastically, they do marvellously well. What they don't get off is fingerprints. What they don't get off is grease marks. And, and of course... There's plenty of things they don't get off, and and, and even the, uh, you know, the cavitation junkies, um, will say, oh yeah, in those those instances you need to pre-clean. And what do you pre-clean with? You pre-clean with chemicals, with with things like this. So, I just think it's it's you know let's let's cut to the chase, get down to the nitty gritty. Um, if you're doing that. You, you know, forget it. You're not damaging your records by using these fluids. Um, so put in the machine, whatever machine, whatever process you're using, use the appropriate fluid. Use the one that's actually going to clean your record uh, thoroughly and properly. Um, you know, every time. So I would say, stick your chosen chemical in in your cavitation machine and, and do it like that. Obviously, check guarantees and warranties and things because, you know, some of these machines will will maybe, you know, say quite strictly don't. And if that was what they'd say, well, I, I wouldn't buy that cavitation machine. It's as simple as that. Um, now, if we get down to, we've talked about cavitation a lot, so let's get down to part two. Uh, the second aspect of record cleaning, which I would say is the, let's call agitation. Now, on my Lorrycraft, I use... Um, uh, I'll say if you check that that video uh, I, I, I linked to up here earlier, this is my preferred brush, so to speak. It's it's not actually a brush. It's kind of like a microfiber velvet pad, um, and interesting, the body is rubber, 
as you can see here, uh, there's several brands that, that make these. This one is actually made by MoFi and it's my favorite one for one reason alone, it's wider. This one here, I can't remember who makes this. And yeah, as you can see, the only difference is it's a bit narrower. And then this is made by Clear Audio and it's narrower still. So how these work, what you're not doing, I mean, these, these are other brushes that, 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 that I've got and tried. So I, I, I'm pretty sure these are the brushes that came with the Lorry Craft. And, and they're pretty damn similar to what comes with the Keith Monks. Um, and uh, these are kind of nylon. Now, this is uh, made by a company called Tonar. It's called a, a wood goat. And they make um, you know, various other brushes. And this is a carbon fiber brush made by Clear Audio. Again, hundreds of companies make these. So when you're cleaning a record, if we, if we imagine taking a cross section through a record, and if you imagine my, my fingers are the record, this is, this is the land, the surface of the record that you see, and these are the bottoms of the groove, okay? So the muck is sort of in, in here. What, we, what we're doing when we're, when we're brushing a record is we're not, these, these fibers aren't getting in here like this and cleaning down to the bottom. They're just, they're, they're too thick. It's as simple as that. And it's the same with these, the natural fibers, and the same with the, you know, the, um, the pile on this. They're not getting in there. To some degree, these carbon fiber, little tiny, they're so, so, so microscopic. To some degree, they will get into the grooves. Uh, but in my experience, if there's any oily residue in there, they just get plucked out and then they, rem they reside in the groove and you've got, you've got carbon fiber filaments stuck in your record groove. So that's, that's not desirable. Now, what is happening is you squirt your fluid on and if you've got a surfactant in there, it will go into the grooves. It won't, it'll just ball on top. And then this is moving along. So it's just, this, the record is revolving. As it passes under here, in these gaps, basically you get turbulence, um, vortices, you know, um, like little whirlpools, like in the rapids in a river. So the, the fluid is swished around really kind of violently, if you like, um, you know, on a microscopic scale violently. And it's that that actually does the cleaning and, and the removing of the, um, you know, loosening of the particles and dissolving of the greases by, you know, whooshing this fluid around and these solvents around. And in a cavitation machine, if we just go sideways for reason this, so this is the record. And in a cavitation machine, the ultrasonic vibration, uh, the transducer that puts that energy into the water is, is creating tiny bubbles which shoot in here and burst. And it's, it's doing a very, very, very similar job. It's doing exactly the same job, in fact, as the, um, the turbulence of the water uh, as, as the, the um, being disturbed as, as the uh, brush runs across the top. It's exactly the same job. Now, I will say, without any question, from my own experience and experimentation, I've only tried two different ultrasonic machines. Um, but without any doubt, I do believe that that cavitation effect of a cavitation bath uh, is more effective than the turbulence effect of this. So in the ultimate, I would say, yeah, go for an ultrasonic machine. But that's, that's, that's only part of the picture. This is, this is part two, we're talking about the agitation. So we've got basically um, this type of brush or, or, or you know, any manner of these other brushes creating that turbulence with the fluid. Part one was the fluid. And then we need to move on to part three, which is drying. So whether you've got a machine like my lorry craft, which you've just spun around and with, I mean, I, I give, I give it basically um, <clears throat> 60 seconds of, of being brushed by this. And, and I must say when I'm, if that's the surface of the record, well, the surface of the record like that, definitely don't push this down without any question. Don't push this down. Um, 
and we'll briefly touch on machines afterwards and I'll explain what I think makes a good and a bad machine. But you do not want to apply force to this. I just literally let the weight of the brush hold it on the record and you're just holding it to stop it spinning around because it's the it's the the turbulence underneath and the, that's the reason why you know 60 revolutions of this now if that was um let's say that is exactly the same it is exactly the same material it's made out of but let's say it's 10 10 times as narrow as that i guess it's about eight to ten times as narrow so uh 60 revolutions with this would be equivalent to six 600 revolutions with this if you see what i mean in terms of the amount of excuse me the amount of cleaning action, scrubbing action, if you like, uh, fluid scrubbing action going on. Uh, so for me, this is preferable. Okay, purely because it's wider. So but one, once we've done all that, then, then hopefully we've got all of the uh, contaminants, whether it's dust, whether it's grit, whether it's smoke particles, whether it's greases and oils, whether it's, um, you know, uh, you need to get these things in suspension, in the fluid, and then you need to get that fluid off. And you need to get that fluid off thoroughly. So to me, the key part of this last part is how thoroughly you remove the fluid the contaminated fluid, remember, from the record. Uh, and I, as I said, I think there's three ways. You can vacuum it off. You can dab it off with a cloth. Or you can uh, evaporate it off, let's say, by using um, air drying. Now, if you, uh, if, you know, if, you, if, you, if you do the washing up at home, you know... <laughs> Whether you've got a dishwasher or not, but if you do the washing up at home and you clean your teaspoons, for instance, in, in dishwashing water, and then you leave them spoon up in the drainer, you will get watermarks. And of course, it's not watermarks. What it is, it's the marks of whatever was suspended in the water, leaving its residue there. Um, can't think of the technical term for it, but... Um, uh, you know, the opposite of a distillate. If you distill something, you you know, that's pure water and what's left is the impurities. So that's that's what happens when you when you wash your you know your cutlery or your glasses and you don't um you know you don't uh, dry them. So air drying is not the best way to to dry a record in my book because anything that's in that fluid which there will be if you if if your fluid has actually successfully dissolved stuff from the record then the muck that was on the record is now in that fluid either suspended or dissolved if you then evaporate that fluid whatever was taken off the record into that fluid is then just left back on the record it's it's an absolute fool's game of of just you, you're never going to win you're never going to win okay you know, 99% of the fluid is still in the bath and there's only 1% maybe on there. And so, you know, you have helped the situation, but it's, you know, you, you, I'm sure you can see the logic of, of air drying is not the way, is not the best way, it's not the ultimate way of cleaning a record. And that's one of the things about most of these ultrasonic machines, the, um, well, the, the Humming Guru uses an air drying, the D-Gritters use air drying, the Kale Audios use air drying, um, yeah, I mean, you know, most of the ones I can think of use air drying. Um, and hot air drying, all that does is speeds it up. It makes the matter worse in a way. Um, so for me, air drying isn't the way to go. <clears throat> now, the Kermas method uses a very, very labour intensive and tedious um, using microfiber cloths. Uh, that might be very tedious and very labour intensive. But I do think it's better than air drying. Uh, but um, so what's the other option? Well, the other option is vacuum drying. Now, <clears throat> I don't have one to hand, but um, uh, these are the 
Well, this is the you know the replacement via uh, lips, if you like, from a clear audio uh, matrix record cleaning machine, and they're exactly the same as the things stuck to these. So it's sort of like a velvet microfiber pile cloth, and you have two of these stuck either side of a slot in a vacuum arm. Now, Clear Audio wasn't the first company to release a, a record cleaning machine of this uh, design. Um, it might have been nitty gritty, I'm not sure, uh, but there's there's so many companies do it. Um, nitty gritty, Moth, VPI, Project, uh, Clear Audio, obviously I've mentioned. Um, Plenty of companies make, make machines pretty much to the same design or very similar aspects of the design. Now, I'll just mention two of them, Moth and the Nitty Gritty. They have these the slots mounted upright, facing upwards. So you, you wet clean and, and you, you basically are drying your record, you're cleaning your record blind. That for me is inconvenient, not ergonomically successful so that's my major gripe with those two still do a good job don't get me wrong i will get on to <coughs> verdict on record cleaning machines in a minute uh of the others <coughs> you've got the um you know oki noki this one i didn't think to mention earlier clear audios vpis etc 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 and they have these on a either side of a an arm which which you, you push down over the record and is held down generally by the suction, which uh, is, a, is, a good, is a good method. But of course, as these are going round, these get wet and they get the, 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 any particles embedded in them. And, you know, theoretically that could then introduce scratches as it's going round. Now, a while ago, and I'm talking 10 or 15 years here, so, so some of the brands that are available now weren't then, but I did with a friend, purely for our own benefit. Um, uh, uh, he was a professional hi-fi reviewer. Uh, he sadly passed away now, but we, we just did it. We wanted to know about, so we, we did a, a test of all the fluids that we could find at the time. Um, and um, we did a test of all the machines that we could get access to. Now, that included um, going from sort of um, cheaper to more expensive. It included the Nosti Disco Antistat, which is uh, still on the market for less than £100. Very, very similar in concept, very, very similar to the Spin Clean. It's basically the same design. Um, then we had the next one up was a an Oki Noki. Now, I have to say this is not the same as the current Oki Noki. It was the original Okinoki machine. Then we had, um, <clears throat> I think we had a Moth. It might have been a similar price to the Okinoki. Um, and we had a VPI 16.5. And then we had a Clear Audio, which I think at the time was the Matrix. So it was uh, before they introduced the sort of sonic vibration aspect, but it was the Matrix. And we had um, a lorry craft, which I think would have been their PRC3, which is kind of their basic machine. Now, interesting observations. The first thing is that all of these machines cleaned your records and were an improvement over not cleaning your records. And when I say not cleaning your records, I mean, I'd say not cleaning your records includes just giving them a brush with a dry brush that doesn't get the greases and oils out. It'll just get a bit of the stuff off of the surface. Um, yeah, that's not cleaning your records. You know, to clean your records, you need to give them a proper wash um, with a with some fluid that's going to get in there. Whether you know, um, and and you need to agitate it, and then you need to get it off again, as we've just explained in the three aspects. So. Of these machines, uh, they all worked and they were all better than nothing, even the even the Okinoki. So let's let's assume I haven't tried a spin clean, but to my eyes it looks like the same design, so let's assume that works well too. Um, in that early early test though, the um with the machines like the Okinoki, the Clear Audio, the VPI, where you've got a 
an arm with these these a slot with these that, that moves up and down. Now, where the arm goes into the body of the machine is is obviously that there, there, there's a gap, and if you get if the gap's too big, you get a lot of air leakage, which will reduce the vacuum along the slot. So that's not a good thing. If you get it too tight, then it reduces free movement or inhibits free movement. And that's where you can potentially run into problems. And that was the problem I found with the Okinoki. As I say, this is the original Okinoki, not the current one, which I have tried and frankly seems okay. But the original Okinoki, you had to sort of force this vacuum, bra, vacuum arm down onto the record um, and friction kind of held it there. So when you stopped the vacuum, it didn't spring up like it does on all the other decent machines. It would just sit there and you'd have to pull it up, which A, gives you a line of muck on the record because you've got these wet, dirty pads against it. But um, my main concern was by having to force it down, if there's any grit anywhere on that surface, it'll get caught in the pad and then revolve round and round and round and you'll end up with a nasty scratch on your record. And I know from watching um, Steve Gutenberg, the audiophiliac, which uh, you know, I love his channel. Um, and I know he's not, not into record cleaning and he's uh, he recounted the story once of when he did try cleaning a record and that was exactly what happened. And I, I, would, I would suggest he just needs to try a better record cleaning machine. Uh, it's as simple as that. So, um, so that's you know all these machines did a good job uh, with a, with a possible exception of the very first uh, Okinoki, but you know I think I've explained tried to explain the reasons why. Of the other machines, um, you know I mean the Clear Audio did come out the best of the of the rest of those type of machines. And I think it's just, it, you know, it was the most expensive, but, but, you know, with any of these things, it means there's less air leakage. So you've got less air leakage where the arm goes into the machine means you've got more suction along the, the slot. Having higher powered vacuum motors means you've got more suction on the slot. All these things, it's just a matter of basic engineering. Take the same design and apply better quality engineering, better quality parts, better quality pumps, etc., etc. you'll get a better result. But it's essentially the same, um, same solution. The reason I went for the lorry craft, which is the same essential design as the Keith Monks, is because instead of a slot, which, you know, let's say that's 100 mil wide by 2 mil you know, say that's, you know, so you've got 200 square millimetres of, of opening in that slot. That's a very rough guesstimate because I've guessed the dimensions. But for argument's sake, say that's what you've got there. Whereas on the lorry craft, you've got like a two millimetre um, uh, cross section. So with the same value of pump, you've kind of got like 100 times more suction force on that single spot and for me that's you know the the you know looking at the you know the, the three aspects once you know if you've you've got good fluid you've got the good agitation sonic whatever then it's about getting it off the most thoroughly that you possibly can and that's why i went with the way i, I that i uh, did and why looking forward i think i'll, I'll stick with the the lorry craft as my drying machine um, and I need to cobble together some sort of uh, ultrasonic bath type of um, arrangement and use that in combination, which is which I have I have tried and works you know to my ears the best of anything. Um, so uh, I think we've kind of covered the drying, why I use the machine I do, the various options of of different drying machines, my my hesitation with the the hot air drying. Um, the fluids, uh, I previously mentioned the Lart Tucson and, and rinsing there. You can rinse with this, uh, no problem doing that. Quite often I'll give things a second clean, uh, but I, I honestly, in my situation, I think that the vacuum removal is so thorough, it's not something that I don't follow that as a religious part of my process, rinsing. Uh, but I will do if I'm using Lart Tucson, generally speaking. Um, I think we've pretty much covered 
uh, the record cleaning um, of of the greases and the oils and, and those sorts of contaminants and you've got a very very clean record surface then just each time you play it just just use one of these carbon fiber brushes and because there's no oil and grease on there it will actually lift lift the dust um, I mean, I've, I've had this 20 odd years I don't know and um, these aren't particularly cheap but you know it's, it's a it's a once in a lifetime purchase um, and this is my preferred brush made by Furatech I don't know if you can see that there's a difference pattern there so you've got natural fibers uh, and you've got this area here, which sort of stops here, if you can see, these are natural fibers coated with, um, I don't know what it is, some sort of nickel something or the other, but basically a conductive material. So whilst the absolute tips are natural fibers, very, very fine, will get, you know, not deep into your grooves, but they'll get into your grooves. Uh, and, and obviously you've got this, this ferrule here, which is, which is conductive and the idea being you hold that brush that around your record and it, it lifts, you know, de uh, re reduces static and lifts the dust out. And that's all I need to do between between wet cleans. And, and you know, you can go 40 years. As I said, this one's, you know, 43 years ago it was clean. Um, now, other, other ways of getting rid of static. Uh, and I think that um, I'll come onto inner sleeves in a moment, but... One of the things, when you take a record out of a sleeve that's just plastic, that's, that's a paper sleeve, just the process of pulling it out generates static. Static is generally, it, it's created by friction and friction with the air is enough to create static. Now, I have two preferred ways of getting rid of static. This is the, uh, the Furatec D-STAT3, which um, is a battery operated device. You press a button, it's got a fan and um, you press this and it runs for about 20 seconds and it puts a, it, 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 it blows a, a stream of, of, you know, ionized air, um, charged particles, air particles onto the record and neutralizes static. And it works very, very, very well. And it's, it, to me, it actually, it, 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 the music sounds better. It's not about pops and clicks and, you know, almost the attracting dust aspect of it is that's a side effect is the, the reason that i use these things is because they actually make the record sound clearer musically clearer um and the very very best of these devices which i've yet to permanently install is made by ds audio it's called the ion 001 uh and you can see you plug this in it's got um uh, it's actually got a light with a dimmer and, and ground switches and on off buttons and these two slots here they are you place this next to your record player. So while the record is playing, you've got your platter here. So if we imagine this record is uh, spinning around here, it will be about there. And this is bathing it with a stream of charged particles, um, air particles, we're talking not, not, not solid particles. Um, as it's playing, as it's moving in air, and, and and it just neutralizes static as it's as it's being um well you know as it's being created if you like in the first place so by far the most elegant and thorough solution for the uh instance of static and i'd say you know this isn't cheap it's it's uh you know it's approaching two thousand pounds i don't know 1500 1600 1700 something like that but um an absolute you know it is the ultimate and the most thorough solution to the problem of static. Now, inner sleeves. Um, if I go back to, so, you know, you, you, you've got your basic, um, what have we got in here? Let's have a look. I pulled this one out. So this is my, these are the sort of basic, you know, some records will come like this, some records won't. Uh, so this is a polylined or some sort of plastic lined inner sleeve. And, um, you know, we've all seen these before and they're perfectly okay. I much prefer these to card or paper sleeves that don't have any lining. And I would definitely replace those uh, in every instance. Uh, and you can buy these sort of um, 
you know, over the years I've bought branded ones from WH Smiths or Boots or Goldring or, or whoever, lots of companies make these and um, you buy them and, you know, put your records in them and it keeps them nicer. Now, they're great. They're better than non-polylined inner sleeves, but they're not the best, in my opinion. And I'm just quickly going to run through what I think are. Now, the very nicest, which I haven't seen on the market for, I think these were probably made in the 1980s. But this is, I wonder if anyone recognises these, because I, I would... Someone needs to put these back in production. It's 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 a it's a sort of a fabricy kind of material. Uh, it's porous. You can see, you know, with strong sunlight here, I can kind of see through it. Um, and it's soft. It's just, I mean, they are the most perfect sleeve for keeping your records nice. And that's a nice Sheffield lab pressing, as we can see. Um, but they're they're just. They're fantastic sleeves. And also they have cut away on one edge, which is always, it's a good idea because these things are designed to be slipped into other colours. So these, no longer made, but to be honest, that to me is the model of what we're looking for in the perfect inner sleeve. So as to what's on the market now and what I really recommend. So the best inner sleeves I am aware of on the market now are these. And they're made by MA Recordings, uh, or they're marketed by MA Recordings. Um, and they are, again, it's almost like a fabric. If you can have a look at that closely, you can see. So they differ in being white rather than black, and they don't have to cut off corners. That's about the only difference from those, uh, the, the black uh, ecstatic or whatever ecstat sleeves that... Uh, we mentioned just a moment ago but these are these are currently available they're not they're not super expensive i can't honestly remember the price off the top of my head um i know that um brook audio vinyl adventure who uh, i get some of my stuff from sells them but it, you know by no means they're, they're not exclusive to them so you can get these but they're called ma recordings inner sleeves and without question, these are the nicest inner sleeves that I'm aware of um, on the market at the moment. They're really soft. They're, they're, they're just, they're beautiful. Don't, won't generate static and they won't scratch your records in any way. Okay. MA recordings. Beautiful. Um, but, you know, I've got thousands of records. I can't afford to replace all my, all my um, LPs in those. So what I typically use these days, um, uh, if I just get this tone poet out, me Morgan the cooker, fantastic. You can see these sleeves here. Now, these are, I believe, known as Blake sleeves. And I believe they're made of HDPE, high density polyethylene. I think that's what HDPE stands for. And they are, they are anti-static. Um, it's a different and a thicker plastic to what's uh, what's inside your, your poly line dynasty. But again, they're really lovely, and they they are what Blue Note Tone Poets uh, come supplied with, which is really really cool. So they're really nice. Uh, I, I will put a link where I get these from. Uh, because they're really they're really inexpensive. I mean, they really are inexpensive. Uh, I buy them a hundred at a time or two hundred at a time, and um, they're phenomenal. Other other inner sleeves of note are the Mobile Fidelity archival inner sleeves, uh, which I say they're they're very similar, if not identical, to what Analog Productions use. I can't fault them, um, but they're again they're more expensive. Um, I don't know whether they're more expensive than the MA Recordings ones, but I would choose the MA Recordings over those. Um, another inner sleeve, which I'm sure most of you have known, is the Nagioka. Um, very, very, very thin inner sleeves, um, which are 
uh, you know, they, they're great for sliding in sli inside a uh, sort of a printed inner sleeve, but I just find them too thin um, and, and they just get folded over and screwed up and, you know, that's, that's not to my taste. So, um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, the best are the MA recordings, uh, in my opinion, um, but the best value are the HTP, I believe they're called Blake sleeves, uh, but I'm not entirely certain there. Uh, but um, you can buy those for, I, I, you know, honestly, can't remember the exact price, but it's like £20 for 100 or something. It's really inexpensive. Um, you know, 20p each to protect your record is nothing, is it, surely? Um, so anyway, how to wrap up. Just, I would say, just think and consider record cleaning. If you've, um, you know, think about the fluid, think about the me mechanical process of brushing, you know, whether that's done with ultrasonic cavitation, whether it's done with brushes, all that kind of stuff, and think about the drying um, and how you want to go about it. Uh, and also think about, you know, my experience of, of, of like, you know, even the Disco Antistats, uh, you know, AKA Spin Clean, I mean, they may be very different, but I don't think they are. Um, they did a perfectly good job, a job better than nothing. Um, and then just, just one little thing. I mean, think about the people who are sort of scaring, you know, or, or scared of, uh, some of these methods. And, and uh, you know, if you listen to all of them, their stories will be, oh, yeah, but I took my record that I'd had for 50 years and, you know, been cleaning through a whole manner of methods. And I used, you know, Mr. X, Y and Z, probably someone wearing a white coat, uh, company's machine or process. And it came up cleaner than it's ever been. It was like like a brand new record again. Well, if that's the case, whatever you were doing previously, didn't destroy the record you just didn't clean it as thoroughly as the current method um, and I think that's a really important thing to bear in mind um, you know making an improvement by cleaning your record is making an improvement that's great if you don't clean your record you don't make the improvement if you subsequently get a better machine and that cleans it even more thoroughly you make an even better improvement I mean great but don't worry about don't worry about whether what you're doing is perfect or not, or the, the very, 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 very best that you could possibly do. Um, you know, I can't afford uh, 3,000, 5,000 pounds on the, the top record cleaning machine. I'm currently weighing up whether to get a humming guru um, or just get one of these ultrasonic baths because I'm probably almost, well, I'd say I'm almost certainly not going to be using the air drying aspect of it. Um, uh, cause that is, you know, my, 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 uh, the, the best I've used is, is a combination of ultrasonic baths with fluids, with chemicals in and, um, vacuum drying. Anyway, I hope that was of interest. I hope that was help to some people. Uh, I hope it, uh, hope to alleviate some fears and um you know maybe give you some 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 guidance and and you know but let's all look forward and just uh, enjoy our music clean your records cleaned records not only sound better than uncleaned records um i believe your stylus will last longer because you're not playing you know you're not it just makes sense doesn't it i mean i bought my first record cleaning machine when I bought my first cartridge that was over well, a four figure sum. And uh, I kind of figured, well, if, if you know, if I get 50% more life out of my stylus, um, then, you know, I can afford to spend 500 pound on a record cleaner. That was kind of how I looked at it back then. And I still believe that to be perfectly honest. Uh, but it's, you know, lessening wear on your records, lessening wear on your stylus, extracting more music more musical enjoyment um that's all things that can come from cleaning your records well so i hope that helps uh on that note i'm going to say 
cheerio. Thank you very, very, very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.